Okay. Pray the Lord, saints, and uh, thank the Lord for another opportunity to come and, with the Word of God today. And uh, we just ask the Lord to undertake that and give us wisdom and grace in His Word. So, first of all, let us have a word of prayer. Father, what a wonderful Savior you are. We thank you for this great opportunity that we can come and sit at your feet and take in your word, the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. So, Lord, let's have your way today. We pray, Lord, for the saints, Lord, that you continue to undertake for them, that you guide them and direct them, that you undertake for their every need. And, Lord, may they consider what I say, but you give them the understanding. Use me for your glory. Hide me behind the cross, Lord, and you do the speaking. And Lord, I thank you for this using me for your glory. Have your way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'd like to start today by just asking a question. And the question is, are you prepared for his return? Have you prepared yourself for the Lord's return. You know, that's a question, and we find today that many are preparing for many things. You know, we, if the COVID-19 have a, have the whole world in, in an uproar. It's in the uproar, and many uh, people were not ready or prepared for the outcome. Many people were not ready and prepared for the outcome of the COVID-19. And even now, many people are preparing to get their lifestyle back to normal. The government even are trying to get their economy back together. Many have lost jobs. Homes have been torn apart by death of family members and many other things. All of these things, all of these things, and in all of these things, not many are preparing themselves for the return of Christ. Men are not preparing themselves for the return of Christ. He is the least spoken of. But when you read all four of the Gospels, all four of the Gospel book, it talks of his return. And many other places in Scripture talks about his coming, that he's coming again, he's returning. If you have your Bible, I'd like to turn to Luke 12, 40 today, and we're going to begin there. And Luke 12, 40. I'll give you the opportunity to, to find it, and uh, when you find it, we'll read this verse, and then we'll move on from there. And Luke 12, 40 says, Be ye therefore ready. Be ye therefore ready. Also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not. And they tell us to be, be ready, be prepared. Because the Son of Man is coming again. He's coming. And his word say he's coming. And you can believe his word because he is coming. Christ will turn at an unexpected time and not the many might say it's a trap. <laughs> you know, they're trying to trap me to do it. Do a certain thing. Or, uh, it's a trick. Uh, it's a trick by uh, with God hopes to catch us unaware. God had to catch us off guard. In fact, God is the land to return, so many people will have a better chance to be saved. And that's why the scriptures that the Lord is long suffering to us more that we might have this opportunity to give people the gospel that they might be saved. <coughs> and we know that uh, uh, during this time before his people will have, during this time his people will have the opportunity to share his love to others. We must continue to be that light and soul that we have us to be. You know, the scripture said the whole world and first uh, John 5, 19, I believe it says, the whole world lies in wickedness. The whole world lies in wickedness and darkness. But I can tell you, there is light. And God said, I, I am the light of the world. His people is light. And he wants us to share that light to a dark, to people that are walking in darkness. That's our job. That's our responsibility to share that light to those that are walking in darkness. 
So more and more, well, we must, we must, uh, and uh, we want to look at First Thessalonians chapter five, verse six. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse six. If you have it, I'll read it. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse six, it says, "Therefore." Let us not sleep. And he's talking to those that are born in the family. Let us not sleep as do others. But let us watch and be sober. Let us watch and be sober. Let us watch and have self-control. Let us watch and have self-control. Believers have been uh, delivered out of it out of darkness into the marvelous light. And we shall not sleep in spiritual indifferences. We shall not sleep in spiritual indifferences and, and comfort. But be alert. Be alert to the spiritual issues around us. We shall not uh, live like those in darkness. So we've been transfer out of darkness into the marvelous light. And it says we not we should not live like those in darkness. We should not live like those in darkness, but be alert and obey the truth of the word of God. Obey the truth of the word of God. So here they tell us, you know, don't be asleep, don't be, uh, 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 don't have a spiritual indifference, indifference to the word of God. And we're going to look, uh, now we're going to look at another scripture along the line. We want to, want to turn now to Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. And when you when you read Mark chapter thirteen, uh, we said this this whole uh, 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 the entire thirteen chapter of Mark tell us how to live while we wait for his return. It's going to tell us how we should live while we wait for his return. But we're only going to look at Mark chapter 13 and Mark chapter 13. We want to focus on uh, verse 35 and 36. Verse 35 and 36. We find in verse 5 and 6 we are not to be misled by confusing claims of what will happen. If you look at that, Mark chapter 13, it says in verse 5, And Jesus answered them, Answer them, begin to say, take heed that any man deceive you. You know, during this time, Satan wants to really deceive you. He wants to deceive you. And, and uh, we should not be confused by that claim of what, we, what would happen. We should not be afraid to tell people about Jesus, despite what they might say or uh, do to us. And we see that in Mark chapter 9 to 11. I read it said, but take heed, verse 9, to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to counsel. And in the synagogue ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be preached among all nations. But when they shall uh, lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand, what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. So the whole chapter of Mark is talking about what, how we should live concerning his return, concerning his return. We must endure by faith and not be surprised by persecution in the same chapter. If you look at verse 13, it says, 
and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. He that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. It's not talking about salvation here, but he that endure shall be saved of the persecution that shall come. He that endure to the end shall be saved. Then it says we must be morally alert in the same chapter. Morally alert, obedient to the command for living for a living uh, found in God's word. Be obedient to the man, morally alert, obedient. If you look at that, you'll see that in verse, uh, uh, when we get to verse 35, and on down to verse 37. And verse 35, it says, watch ye therefore, be alert, watch. For you know not when the master of the house cometh. At evening, or at midnight, or at the cock corn, or in the morning. Let's come in Sunday, verse 36. He find you sleeping. He find you sleeping unprepared, not ready, but he find you sleeping. And then he uh, give us an exclamation to the, those saying in verse 37. He said, now what I say unto you now, I say unto all, watch. And we see this message is, is, is uh, we're, we're written then, but it's for the present time even now. It's for the present time even now. What I say unto you, watch. Be alert. Be prepared. And the message is for even the present day. It was spoken back then in, in the time when it was written, but the message is for the present time. What? And pray and take heed. Take heed to yourself. Let's any time you it says we want to look at a, a we want to look at another scripture along that line. Uh, I'm trying to find the scripture. Let me see what scripture it is here. <clears throat> the scripture. Take heed to yourself, lest at any time your heart be overcharged and weighted down. That's all uh, we find it in. I'm trying to uh, find the scripture. I'll come back to that in a few minutes to <coughs> find the scripture, but we're going to uh, continue on. And looking at, uh, <coughs> are you prepared for his return? We want to, uh, that scripture, we want to look at it. It's found in uh, uh, the Gospel of Luke. Verse 21 to 34. I had to <laughs> pause for a minute to find, to uh, remember where the scripture was. It's found in Luke chapter 21. If you turn to that, I'll read it. Luke chapter 21, verses 30, 34 to 36. And again, to tell us to it gives us the signs, you know, this chapter is talking about the signs of the times and the coming of coming of the Son of Man. We look at verse 34, it said, it, it, talking here, and said, it tells us to watch and pray. Watch. Uh, be alert. Uh, be prayerful. Be prayerful. And it said, 34, it said, take heed to yourselves. Let at any time your heart be overcharged or burdened down with, with uh, uh, surfeiting, burdened down with surfeiting, with the cares of this life 
and the temptation of the world and the flesh. With seven and drunkenness and cares of this life, so that the day come upon you unaware. You're not aware. You're not ready. You haven't prepared for the coming. Verse 35 says, For as a snare shall it come on all them that are that dwell on the face of the whole world, of the whole earth. And we see today that the, the pandemic came that way. It just didn't come to such uh, certain areas of the world, but it came on the whole world, on the whole world. And it caught them, it, it was like a snare, and it caught them unaware. But 36 it says, Watch ye therefore and pray. Watch. Watch ye therefore and pray. How long? It says always. Always that you may be accounted worth it to escape all these things that should come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Stand before. That was found in Luke chapter 21 verse uh, 34 to 36. And they tell us we must watch and pray and resist the temptation around us. We must stay focused on his word found in, if we look at the, the Psalm 119, verse 89, we must stay focused on the word of God. Of course, Satan wants to take your focus off the word of God. He wants to show you other things that you won't be focused on what God's word say. You won't be spoken on what, what God says. The enemy he had been uh, the enemy had been attacking the word of God, and many people have ignored the Bible, uh, though at the time and try know the Bible, know, and know the Bible, and at times trying to do away with it, but still stands. God's word is rooted in history. And spoken to everyone that will listen. The word is the word is uh, found forever and will endure forever. That why we need to build our life on the word of God, and you will weather all the changes of the of life. So we want to look at that in uh, Psalm one nineteen verse eighty nine. It says. Psalm 119, verse 89. It says that forever, O Lord, thy word is self in heaven. The word is already self. It's self forever in heaven. And that's what it said. Many might try to change the word. Uh, Satan, the enemy, might attack the word of God. Many people have ignored the word of God, but we know that the word of God, the scripture said, it already settled in heaven. It is tried by fire. The word is found. It is tried by fire. It endures forever. That's why we need to build our lives on the word. And we will weather all the changes of this life. Because God's word is settled in heaven. It's already settled. We can't change it. God's word is settled. This is why we need to uh, build our lives on the word of God. If we want to stay uh, ready and prepared, we must have our lives built on God's word and stand on it. Then we want to look at another scripture in uh, Matthew 5, 18. Matthew chapter 5, verse 18. I don't know about you, but I, I pray the Lord for God's word, and and I thank God that His word is already settled. It's already been tried. It's had been tried, been tried, and it's found worth it. It's always already settled in heaven, and it's what we need to stand on. It's what I need to stand on. Pray the Lord we can stand on God's word. Amen. Because his word is our lifeline. And Matthew 5, 18, it says, if you have your Bible attended, that will get a chance to look at that. 
Matthew 5, 18. It's still talking about God's word, how it's, it's uh, forever. Verse 18 says, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, can all be fulfilled. God's word is settled. And not one jot or one till. Uh, uh, <coughs> and no wise is uh, To all be fulfilled. God's word is complete. Nothing can be added to it. And nothing taken away. <coughs> nothing can be added to it. It tells us that in Revelation. Nothing can be added to it. And nothing can be taken away. It's forever settled in heaven. God's word. And it's been tried. Many have tried. Many have tried to change it. Satan even tried to attack the word. People have tried to deny it. But thank God his word is already settled in heaven. And this is what we need to stand on. If we want to be prepared and be ready for his return. Because he's coming. We don't know when, but we see many of the birth pains, and we know it's not going to be long. The song we used to sing said, won't be long, and we'll be going home. Won't be long, and we'll be going home. It doesn't tell us when, but we see the birth pains, and it won't be long, it says, and we'll be going home. What a blessing. What a blessing that is. All right, we want to look at another scripture found in the Psalms, 119, verse 140, it says. Give you the opportunity to find that one. The 119th Psalm, verse 140. Give you the opportunity to find it and then I'll read it. The 119th Psalm, verses 140. Verse 140 says, Thy word, thy word, God's word, is very pure. And that's some God's word is very pure, it says in, in uh, Psalm 140. It's been refined and it, it, it's very pure, it says. And 140. Therefore, thou servant, thou servant loved it. Do you love the word? Do you love God's word? God's word has been refined. It's pure. It's been refined. It's very pure. Therefore, thou servant love it. God's word is trustworthy. No matter what people say, it's been tested in the fires of persecution and Criticism has already been tested. It's like you put uh, gold in the furnace and put the heat to it, that it it, it, it draws out all the what they call the, uh, uh, impurities out of it. Then when you look at it, you see it's been refined. It looks like pure gold. God wears it that way. It's already been tried by fire. Been tried by fire. And as believers. And as believers, we have a responsibility to trust it and to stand on it because it's very pure. Praise the Lord, amen. Very pure. God's word is very pure. And then we want to look at that, look at our responsibilities. We have a responsibility now. As believers, we have a responsibility, ability of what actions what action we should take concerning his return. We have that responsibility. And I'd like just to give you four uh, areas of responsibility. There are many other areas of responsibility, but I'd like to give you four uh, actions or responsibility that believers should take concerning, uh, concerning his return. The first one is 
we must redeem the time. We must redeem the time, the scripture said. We must redeem the time. And it says that the days are evil. We live in evil time, dark times. And the, we must redeem the time. Then that, when you look at this, must redeem the time, there are many scriptures. I'm just going to give you uh, just one. But there are many other scriptures as you meditate on this topic. We must redeem the time. I'm just going to look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16. Like I said, there are many other scriptures. After that, when you look at these topics, it could be a sermon in itself. But I'm just going to look at Ephesians 5, 16. <clears throat> if you have it, I'll read it. Ephesians 5, 16. It says, redeeming the time. Why? It tells us why here. It says because the days are evil. Make use of our time because the days are evil. Time. The time refers to one's lifetime as a believer. <clears throat> we have to make the most of our time in this evil world. Make the most of our time in this evil world. And full in God's purpose. How? By witnessing to the laws, fellowshipping, serving, and exposing sin. And it tells us why it says in this verse, because the days are evil. We must be aware of the derivatives of life. James and James 4. At James 4.14, if you ever read that verse, it puts it this way. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? He asked this question, what is your life? And it said, it is even a, a vapor. And you know what a vapor is. You see it for a little while, then it's, it's gone. It's even a vapor that appears for a little time. And then vanishes away. So we must redeem the time. Make use of our time. Redeem the time because it says the days are evil. The days are evil. All right, we're going to, oh, the next one we're going to look at is, next one action we want to take is we should occupy till he come. Occupy. This word occupy may be about his business. Be about God's business. Occupy till he comes. And we just want to look at one verse along the line. We want to look at John. Like I said, there are many other scriptures can go along with occupy till he comes. We have scriptures in Matthew, Luke. But we just want to look at uh, uh, John 4.35. Return to that a minute. John chapter 4, verse 35. If you have it, I read it, John 4, 35. It says, Say not, say not ye, there are yet four months, and then come at harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes, lift up your eyes, and look on the field, for they are white already to harvest. Yes, we should occupy till he comes. And when you look at this verse, you know uh, no creature is more apt to go astray than a sheep. And the Lord said, we are his sheep. He is the shepherd of us. And when going astray, they become more helpless and feeble and exposed 
to any kind of evil and the more apt to find the way home again. They, they you know, they talk about a sheep, he can go right out the door and get lost. He don't know where he is. It'd be hard for him to find the way back home. And that's where some of us are. That's why uh, the Lord said we need to occupy till he come. They're more apt uh, to find a way out home. And that way, we, it said that that's way simple souls are, like, are like sheep. They need the care of a shepherd. And we have the uh, responsibility of sharing the good news with them. How the Lord can save them. Sometimes Christians, are, uh, you know, sometimes we, <laughs> we find many excuses uh, for witnessing. Sometimes it doesn't happen to us. We find many excuses for why we should witness. About saying that family members or friends are ready to believe. How many times you heard that? Well, you know, I would witness to them, but they, they're not really ready to believe in there. But they are ready. Uh, how, what what, what, what other what readiness do they need? They're lost. <laughs> they're lost. So they're ready. And then many times we may find those uh, excuses. Jesus make it clear that around us in a uh, continual harvest, is a continual harvest waiting to be reaped. When we look around us, we will see people ready to hear God's word. We'll see people ready to hear God's word. Many, many of you think that they're smiling and maybe uh, they'll seem to be happy and all that, but on the inside is where the problem lies. The inside, the heart, it wants to hear something that can bring some consolers to the hearts. And what can console them but God's word? And that's our responsibility. It said the harvest is, is, is uh, plentiful. The harvest are occupied Till he come. Be on the job till Jesus come. Because there are many souls that need to hear the word of God that can pull them out of darkness into his marvelous light. So that's one of the actions that we need to, need to take. And then uh, it, uh, another action is we should be a bold witness for him. A bold witness for him. Are you a witness? Are you a bold witness? You know, sometimes people will try to shame you or stop you from witness. Satan don't want to do that. Satan don't want you <laughs> to tell people about Jesus. And sometimes people will try to shame you from witnessing. But in Acts 1 8, we want to look at. Like I said, there are many other scriptures now along these uh, actions. Actually, all four of these could be another sermon in itself. We should be a bold witness for him in Acts. Let's turn to Acts 1 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. This is a verse that you probably have heard many times in, in the book of Acts. Acts. 1, verse 8. If, we, if you uh, have it, I'll read it. Acts 1, 8. It says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and in Samaria and, and the utmost parts of the earth. All over the earth, we should be like a witness for the Lord in Acts 1 8. That's what it says. And we know that uh, Jesus promised the disciples that they will receive power to witness after they have received the Holy Spirit. Often we try to re uh, reverse that order, you know, many times. We try to reverse the order and witness by our 
own power and authority. I, I remember uh, the times when I first got saved. I, I just want to grasp out and tell everybody about what Jesus had done for me. I want to tell everybody about that. But what I was doing, you know, I learned later on that I was doing it in my own strength. But witnessing uh, is not showing uh, what we can do for God. No, that's not witnessing. It is showing and talking and telling what God has done for us. You see. And we have to do it in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit had to, had to, had to convey that message to a lost soul. We only, you know, the carrier of it. And many times we say we need tact to, uh, you know, we need tact to uh, witness to people. Because sometimes witnesses to people can turn them off. I guess you thought about that. Many times witnesses can turn people, I mean, the way you approach them can really turn them off sometimes. But when you witness through the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit gives you wisdom how to approach that person. And the Holy Spirit be the one to turn them to Christ. Not in our own power, but in the power of the Holy Spirit. So what a, what a, what a privilege that is. And then we go on to look at the last one along this line. That will give you the last one along this line. It said, we must walk in love. Walk in love. We must walk in love. And you know, love is God. But we must walk in love. And I want to uh, uh, give you a, a, a scripture law. Like I said, many of these actions, there are many other verses. But I'm just uh, talking on one. We must walk in love. I'd like to turn you to Ephesians uh, uh, chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, a bit. Of. And then we'll look at that. It's a scripture many times we have uh, looked at. Have you been been among us for a time. We know we have heard that scripture uh, many times uh, in Ephesians uh, chapter 3. I'll give you an opportunity to, to turn to it before I read it. Well, it's actually 3 verse 17 through 19. Ephesians 3 chapter 17 through 19. If you have it, I'll, I'll begin reading it at verse 17. Verse 17 says that Christ may dwell in your heart. This word dwell means to, to come in and live and take possession there. That Christ may dwell in your heart is done by faith. By faith. That ye, that, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. Rooted and grounded in love. Verse 18, that you may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. You, you know, uh, uh, when you look at the love, it, it covers all areas. It covers all areas. It covers the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height. And verse uh, 19, it says, And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Talking about this love. 
We must walk in love. Every believer is indwelled by Christ the moment of salvation. Every believer is dwelled by Christ the moment Jesus Christ come in and save them. He is at home, it says. Dwell means he, he's at home. He finding uh, comfort and satisfaction all over our hearts are clean, clean hearts, clean of sin and fill with his spirit. He wants to come in and take residence, a drill in our hearts. Through faith, or a Christian continuing to trust in Christ to exercise his lordship over them. Jesus Christ is Lord. He's my Lord. If you're born again, he's your Lord. He wants to exercise that lordship over us. Then it says, uh, rooted and grounded in love. Rooted and grounded in love. Established on a strong foundation of love for God and his people. Love for God and his people. You know, the scripture, uh, scripture points out very, very plainly that we should love one another. How fervently it says, we should love one another Fervently. And verse 18 it says, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. A believer cannot understand, you know, we can't really understand the fullness of God's love. Apart from the Holy Spirit, we can't understand that. You know, our little love is just uh, conditional. We have that uh, fail or fail, how do you pronounce fail type of love, but God has that garbage type of love. And this love is, is, uh, is we can't love uh, apart from the Holy Spirit power in our own life. We can't do it. Notice it said. How the done this is done with all saints. It didn't say just some, did it? it? Said all saints. Love. Love is both rooted and commanded of every Christian, not just uh, those who uh, have a naturally pleasant temperament. We see a lot of believers, they have a nice pleasant temperament or have spiritual, or maybe they've been saved for a while and have spiritual uh, maturity. But uh, love is not, a, is not a four different features of love we're talking about here. But an effort to suggest its vastness and completeness. That's why I didn't say that uh, uh, this love, uh, it is a breadth, length, depth, and height. It's the vastness, vastness of that love. It, it covers everything. The vastness of it, it covers everything. Not just four different features of love, but the effort to suggest its vastness and completeness. It's complete. God's love is complete. It's vast. Then we look at verse 19, it says, and to know, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that we might be filled with all the fullness of God, to know the love of Christ. Not the love believers have for Christ, but the love of and from Christ, that he places in our hearts before we can truly love and fully love him or anyone else. It has to be that love that he puts in our hearts that calls us to love him and anyone else. The knowledge of Christ, love is, for, is far beyond the uh, capabilities of human reason. It's far beyond that. We can't comprehend it, it says here. We can't, it, it passes uh, knowledge, and, and we really uh, can't comprehend his love. But we certainly can thank God for it. 
is beyond our capabilities of human reason. It is only known by God's children. Only those that are born again and Christ dwelt in our heart can experience this type of love. Believers can experience the greatness of God and uh, uh, God in their lives and they told that uh, when we have total devotion to him, we can experience that kind of love. So these are the four acts that I've given you that you can take to be prepared for his return, to be ready for his return. And like I said, there's many, many, many other scriptures. And, and we have to stand on God's word. We have to redeem the times. We have to even evaluate the use of time in light of the bravery of, of life. And we know that the Lord is coming. And we say we see the birth pains. We don't know when because he don't tell us when. But we can say, Lord, I believe you're coming soon. We can all we say that. I believe you're coming soon. But that's not the problem. The problem is, are you ready? Are you prepared for his coming? Have you made preparations for the Lord's coming? You know, uh, life is uh, about a, uh, life is about being prepared for certain things. It's about being ready for certain uh, situations. But the greatest thing we can prepare for today is His return. And the only way you can prepare for His return, you must stand on God's word. You must focus on His word and do what His word say do. And then when he come, we won't be ashamed. Are you ready? Are you prepared? You know? Are you prepared for his return? Can you say, Lord, I'm ready. I'm prepared for your coming. And I want to continue to, to occupy. I'm going to continue to be watchful. And I will continue to, and my attitude and concern about your returning, that I will have a ready mind to act, to act on your word, and to do those things that you had appointed us to do. Thank you, Lord, for your word, and help us to be prepared because you're coming soon. And maybe today I want to stop there now, and I hope I have given you some words of encouragement on being prepared. But you know, uh, there are many in this world today that are lost. They're not concerned about the Lord's coming, because the Lord is, uh, is, is not much spoken about him today. And they are focusing on all kinds of other things. And they, they're going to be caught unaware. But if you're not truly born again, you can be ready. You can be ready if you're not saved. Because Lord, uh, you know, he, he's long-suffering toward us was. And that's why he's so long-suffering, because he wants to give you an opportunity to be saved. But you have to heed the invitation. The invitation is when you come. Come. Come unto me, all ye that labor. All ye that are going through situations that are bringing you down. And the Lord said, come. I, I, I want to give you rest. I'm, the, I'm that heavy weight lifter. <laughs> come. Come unto me. I want to save you. I want to born you and to my family, that you can be prepared, that you can be ready when I come. And you know, that sounds so simple, 
but then you have to want it. You have to tell God, the Lord, I want to be saved. I want to be ready. I want to prepare my heart for your return. And, and he will do that. But then you have to make the decision. And maybe you want to pray a prayer like this, the Lord Jesus. Let's tell him, say, Lord Jesus, Lord, you know, I'm a sinner. I made preparation about many things, but I'm not ready for your return. And I want to be ready, Lord. Come into my heart like and save me. Born me into your family. I believe that you died for me, that you were buried, and Lord, that you rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And Lord, I want to be saved. Come into my heart of life and set me free. Unshackle me from this, this burden and pain of, of sin. Save me, Lord, and I thank you. Thank you for saving me. Then, Lord, help me to be ready and prepare for your return. And then give him thanks. So, Lord, I thank you for saving me. Thank you for bringing me out of the darkness into a marvelous light. Just thank him. Just tell him thank you. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, saints, I hope you all, the word of God have kind of give you some encouragement, like I say, when you go back and meditate on these scriptures, that many other scriptures that can bring out more things. And when you read uh, the four gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you can see the Lord talks about his return many times in all four of the scriptures, and even in other places in the scriptures. He's talking about saying, I'm coming again. I'm going away, but I'm, I'm coming again. And he's coming. But he don't tell us when, but he tells us to be ye also ready. Be ye also ready and prepared that you won't be ashamed of my appearing. Let us pray. Father, what a wonderful opportunity you've given us. And Lord, we know that you will say you're coming again, Lord. And Lord, we want to be prepared. We want to be prepared and be ready, Lord. So Lord, we pray that you undertake. And then Lord, we pray that you, the word said in Psalm 39, for Lord, make me to know my end and the measures of my days. What it is that, if I, that I may know how frail I am. So Lord, help me to be all that you have me to be. Thank you for all things. I'm going to take for the saints, Lord. Help us to love one another fervently, that our love, that love might be uh, rooted and grounded in our hearts and lives for you. Thank you, Lord, for the leadership. We need your wisdom and grace that you might contain to Prepare us and prepare the saints for your return. So, Lord, we're going to thank you for all that you've done. Continue to undertake for the coronavirus. We pray that you continue to bring some closure to the Bible. Lord, that we, everyone that might be uh, uh, take the vaccine. And, Lord, we know that you, you're you able. I'm going to take for the government, those in the White House, the president, vice president, judges, lawyers, and the governors, Lord. They need your wisdom, Lord. Save them, first of all, and then give them wisdom, Lord, to legislate, uh, legislate uh, true, uh, true words, true decisions, true laws for the country. Thank you, Lord, for all things. We give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and Amen.